broadcast this. What's up, Ben? Having trouble hearing you, but that may be my fault. Let me check. <laughs> it's you. I'm not sure. Muted? Oh, hey, hey, uh, uh, the mute button was on. There gotcha. we go. I can, can you hear me I now? I can hear you now. All right. So we are broadcasting. Good. I'm going to play around with some settings still. The TV looks cool. You should open a different tab and go to ds106.tv slash live. And check out what we got going on here, because it's pretty awesome. Doing it now. Um, and I'm going to crop this. screen. So how's it going, man? I enjoyed your uh, video game remixes last night. Oh, did you really? Good. I'm glad. <laughs> it was fun. Um, yeah, I have been... Ooh, look at the TV. Okay, I gotta mute it now, otherwise... There yeah, we go. <laughs> you get um, feedback. Yeah, that's been a lot of fun. Um, that's actually a little... I, I know I've I've kind of done the full court press on that stuff, but uh, that's mm -hmm. a little area of my life that uh, um, I didn't exactly leave, but I seriously toned down about five years ago. And, right. uh, you know, now that my kids are getting older and stuff and everything, just enjoying reconnecting with it. So, yeah, totally. Uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm, thanks for the request, by the way, because that, uh, that was actually fun searching for some of those. Yeah. <laughs> So Stephen Downs, do you follow him on Twitter? Uh, name is very familiar, but I don't. I forget where I he's do. out of. But um, anyway, he was playing around with Hangouts, and he's got a huge ed tech following. So you know, he said, "I'm in a Hangout," and immediately had like ten or twelve people in there or something. And so I decided to jump in there and see what it was like. So I got to play around with it a little bit more. Because I've only jumped in here one other time, and it was just with one other person, and it looked a lot like Skype, like we're doing right now, uh -huh. except I really like the design of this. But the nice thing I noticed today is once we get more people in here, when they're talking, their screen will come up to the top. It will do automatically. It will automatically switch the video based on who's talking. So it, it's kind of like, uh, kind of like what a, what what uh, those big expensive um, video conferencing bridges do. In other words, right. Cool. Yeah, so I've got I've got that main area zoomed in on the software that we use for DS106 TV and as people are talking that should just switch. Hmm. So, I'm excited um Rowan Peters going to come in here. I believe he he was already trying but he may have bandwidth issues and I should jump on Twitter so I can follow some of that. Um who else? Brian Jackson was going to come in. Um Julia Forsyth I think is going to join us. She was in there with Stephen Downs earlier, so I got to see her, but I think she's going to jump back in. So there's cool. a couple people. Yay. Um, yeah. <laughs> there we go. All right, so there's the one TV. How do I invite people to the... Can I get, like, a link? No, I can't. On the bottom left, do you have an invite button? I, I see it here, yeah. So I have to... Two cool. more. Oh. I'm just going to invite all of DS106. Do it. <laughs> I don't there have too go. many people added to my circles because I haven't been able to really jump into this too much, mm -hmm. and it's kind of hard for me to find people. So, I've I've been purposely well, I don't know if you read the post, but I purposely have not done. I've just I've just created a circle for DS one hundred six. That's it, and I've just left everyone out there adrift. So right, which is okay because I'm sure they're adding me to all their circles. So yeah, 
<laughs> How's it going, Jason? All right. Um, I kind of fiddled around this with this a little bit before. Um, didn't know about doing it on live internet TV here, but here we are. <laughs> hey, no problem. I, yeah, I mean, the funny thing is, you know, you go into a Hangout right now, the rule about Google Plus and the rule about Hangouts is that all you talk about is Google Plus and Hangouts and <laughs> everything. Mm -hmm. It's very meta. But kind of the I'm anti fight Twitter up. here. <laughs> the first rule of Google Plus is right. you only talk about Google Plus. You only talk about Google Plus. <laughs> right. So Rowan's jumped in and out a few times. I'm wondering if he's having bandwidth issues. I really don't know. I noticed he's that. He's out in Australia. Ooh. So. Wow, they got a chat and my link is broken. Ben Rhymes is now watching YouTube. Yeah, I just turned it off. Oops, sorry. That's kind of cool. That's really interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's like a YouTube theater, and I can. It puts a little bar came up, letting me know that you were going to watch it, and I could choose to watch with you. And so, whatever video you pulled up is what we could all watch. That's that's really cool. That is that's that's exactly what I was thinking about yesterday and two days well two days ago when when Tim Doom was um, mm -hmm. when he was doing uh, um, showing all the videos that uh, um, right uh, that Tom Woodward had shared I was like oh that would just be perfect to just do the hangout so we could all just watch the video right there and be talking and chatting rather than watching the video in super tiny mode on his screen yeah, and we were using, we've tried using SyncTube before. I don't know if you've ever played with that, but it allows you to create a room and then people can join that room and you have moderators that can control the, the video player settings. So you can say, let's watch this video and you can play and you can pause and it does it for everybody. So they're all in sync. Now, I wasn't sure. We've used that before because we were playing around with um, like mystery science theater type stuff late night on DS106 TV and we would all watch like this like B-rated science fiction flick from the 60s and we would all be on Skype uh, piping it in and talking over top of it. I'm a little confused as far as capacity. Um, I saw earlier that Stephen's hangout earlier this morning had Stephen Downs he said 22 people I thought I had oh. read something about a 10-person limit. It's what, what they say afterwards is how many people came and went. So I think there's 10-person limit on a hangout, but as people come and go at the end, it broadcasts how many total he hung out with. So it's a concurrency uh, limit. Yeah. Although it'd be interesting to know if more can join but not be able to do video. I don't know. It may just be ten person, and that's what it is. Oh right, right. Now, do you work from home, Ben? I don't work from home. Um, I just no. uh, I have July off, so this was kind of oh just, right. Yeah, serendipitous to be able to do mm -hmm. this course and everything, and so yes, I, I kind of give that. Uh, um, I guess I could see how that would be easy to surmise based on mm -hmm. everything I've been doing. <laughs> well, I remember you were talking about having contractors in your basement while you were watching, and then I could see that it didn't look like an office there. So the beauty yeah, of K-12. through 12, my, <laughs> life, my wife loves that. <laughs> she loves her summers. Uh, yes, it's very nice. Um, mm -hmm. My summers have shrunk. Uh, I mean, I used to have the typical you know, sort of beginning of June all the way to late August, but uh, now that I'm in a, a coordinator level position, it's pretty much July is it, and that's it for me, so. Yeah. But. Well, that's oh. nice that you're even 11 month. I know a lot of technology people are ending up becoming 12 month employees to try and save money. Yeah, well, and I'm in, I'm in a unique role. I'm in I'm in a sort of a hybrid role where um, a lot of large school districts have had uh, sort of instructional coaches or technology coaches or or maybe even something similar to what uh, I don't fully understand what you do what you guys do at uh, DTLT, but I assume something similar to that. So this was a new position mm -hmm. this last year since our district isn't too large, about 
just a little shy of 4,000 students. So I taught for seven years and uh, taught for eight years. And uh, um, the idea was, well, there's the technology isn't going away, and it just keeps coming faster and faster. So maybe we should have a teacher that's a part of the technology department. So that way it's right. not just the typical, you know, I call up IT and I need help. And they're like, well, did you? Did you turn off the computer and restart it? Try it that way, you know. And mm -hmm. so, it's been fun. But what do you do? I'm 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 interested to know. Or what did you do previously? What did to, I do previously? To, yeah. Uh, and what do I do now? Very different things. Um, previously, I worked at Longwood University in Farmville, Virginia. It exists. Um, and hey, Zach. <clears throat> and what basically. Up, yo? Basically, my job previously at Longwood was that I was in charge of student laptop support in terms of hardware repairs. I was a computer technician. I was repairing laptops. I was um, faculty staff laptops, too. Um, really, just any sort of mobile device sort of fell under my area. But I was a technician in that regard. But I really wanted to get into the instructional role and there weren't a whole lot of avenues to do it so a lot of what I was doing at Longwood was just hey I'm gonna have a professional development on iPads I'll get a room and I'll do it myself and you know I just kinda pushed for it all on my own right. hey Julia hi guys <clears throat> and so um, but anyway and so then I got involved with DS 106 uh, December of last year we started playing around with it and then all through the spring and that's how I met Jim Groom and that and he was actually he had ended up um, he was doing some consulting work for the library at Longwood, and he came down um, to work with them a little bit. And so we had gone out to lunch, and I was like, yeah, I heard that y'all are in hiring instructional technologists. And he said, yep, it's my area. I'm on the hiring committee. You should apply. <laughs> and I was like, I said, oh, I don't know. I'm not in, I'm, I don't think I'm ever going to move. I'm, I'm pretty much, I guess, you know, I don't know. That, that's a really big decision. He said, just apply. What you know, I mean, I'm not asking you to take a job or anything, but just apply for it. So I applied, and the more I thought about it, the more I was like, it's a huge opportunity. And so I jumped on it, and I'm excited because now what I do is uh, it is an instructional role. Um, it's working one-on-one -on -one with the faculty anytime they want to use technology, anytime they have any harebrained ideas about can this be done, can we do this or that. Uh, DTLT is very much, it reminds me of a research and development type facility. Um, you know, it's the office, nobody has little cubicles or their own offices. It's one big, almost press room style. We all sit together, uh, we're all working on stuff. We can pull each other in to do things. Uh, it's awesome for a uh, university to put that kind of uh, budget and dedication into something like that because Longwood never had anything of that nature. Most places don't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was just gonna say that. Uh, that sounds really cool. Um, <laughs> that, that's that's sort of like we started on ops end of the spectrum, sort of meeting in the middle there. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that sounds really and you cool. Know, and you know, it that. pays off. It pays off for Mary Washington because you know when you give people freedom to say, hey, you know, you can work one on one with faculty if they have questions. If you don't have anything going on with faculty or you have spare time, just go out there and figure out what's going on, what kind of cool things are coming up, make stuff for Mary Washington, develop applications, whatever you want to do, just do it. Um, but there's not as much oversight in our department of what are you working on right now? Turn in a work plan, do this, do that. Well, you know, what are you working on right now? Give me some feedback on this. What work orders do you have going on? They don't have any of that. And so then there's the freedom to really just explore and create. And the payoff is there. I mean, DS-106 is, you know, framing what an online course can be. That's just going to pay dividends for Mary Washington as they become, you know, <clears throat> you know, in a larger role, I think Mary Washington is going to see stuff like that and say, you know, we're really groundbreaking. Right. You know, what they did with blogs years ago. That's really difficult for a lot of universities uh, to see, uh, especially large universities. I was at, uh, last December, I was at the University of Michigan for uh, a small little one-day uh, uh, workshop with... Uh, that was being run by Apple for iPads, and it was really interesting to see um, all of these different uh, professors and faculty and everything in this lecture hall from all different areas of the university. Um, 
it's like, okay, okay, that makes sense, right? It's University of Michigan, really big university, and they get lots of resources, and they should be forward-thinking on it. But it was really interesting. It sounded like they were doing this because they kind of put this together themselves. You know, like they've got something similar. They've got they've got a uh, um, uh, an interactive uh, communications and simulations group. But they don't get a lot of press. They don't get a lot of. They don't really get a lot of anything. <laughs> um, it's just a couple guys. It seemed like they keep it running. Um, so it's just really interesting. I think it's a testament, to, like you said, to what uh, to what's going on there. That you're willing to, the university is really willing to put up that time and that money to do that. And I'm excited because now the person who was um, one of the point, he was the point man for distance education, and he's leaving. And now distance education is going to come to DTLT. Um, so a good portion of it, their budget, their people, and that kind of thing, it's, I mean, so it's going to explode. Um, we're just going to do some really cool stuff with that. And I'm excited. We're going to be able to hire a second person. Um, <clears throat> and so it'll be very cool. I think even more than funding, it's about locus of control sometimes, uh, depending on what kind of district or institution you're at. You know, it, it takes some bravery, and, and UNW has certainly shown it, to kind of let loose of things. I've seen so many institutions where you know, everything must run through the LMS, and, and, and instructors worry greatly about, what if somebody gets a hold of my handouts? Um, I've had somebody say that to me. And, and so it's right. very much about culture as much as it is about uh, resources. And is Brian Jackson nude? This is being broadcast live to the internet. It's Fair Jeremy warning Lutt. to everybody. <laughs> Y'all are cracking me up. Dan, did you remember to put an NSFW tag on this? I, I should have, yeah. <laughs> I, I should have known by the group of people uh, in my circles and in all y'all with DS-106 that, uh, that we were never going to keep this PG, or even PG-13 for that matter. <laughs> So who has um, who has played with Google Plus more? Because I have to admit, I'm more of a, I've been jumping in and out here and there, but for the most part, I haven't gotten a chance to play around with it much. Either I haven't gotten a chance or I haven't felt the pull. One, two, three, not it. <laughs> yeah, pass. <laughs> Nobody wants to talk. I have played with it a lot, mostly because I can't decide what I want to do with it yet. Because um, mm -hmm. I find that I'm recreating at this point kind of a subset of my Twitter follower or people I follow list. And I'm not sure if that's quite the right thing to do with it. Um, sure. I feel like it's certainly better than Facebook in terms of granularity and, and things like that, but I'm quite sure that I don't want to recreate my Facebook friends list over here, so I'm trying to figure out what's the, what's the network that I want to build here. And I think once I decide who I want to be here with, then maybe the use case will make more sense to me. You know, it feels like any time a social network comes on, the question is what's it going to replace? Is it going to kill Facebook? Is it going to kill Twitter? It's never that a social network can stand on its own anymore. It's got to kill something or it's got to replace something. No, there isn't. Uh, and for some people, it seems like Google Plus is, uh, oh, this is a better version of Facebook. Other people are like, oh, I'd rather do this than Twitter. Um, you know, I love the circle concept and that kind of thing. There is a question so, of how and, many streams you can follow and not lose right. your mind. Because mm -hmm. I'm now discovering I've got to have Twitter over here, and I've got to have Google Plus open all the time to see what's coming in that stream. Um, and it's feeling a little bit overloadish already. <laughs> yes. You know, the best thing ever is when you delete a circle, it rolls away. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> that's a good UI. I'm working on doing um, Satan circles, the nine circles of, of hell. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Hey, somebody just sent me that via Google Plus. I gotta go find that now. What's up, naked Brian Jack? <laughs> 
how do I turn it over so it's actually me? I got the mic on. It's auto magic. Oh, do I, no. I click my It's own just face switching video to you right, automatically. Yes. We have Perfect. to be kind enough to stop talking as well. <laughs> well, you know, you guys caught me kind of early in the morning, what with the 10 a.m. start, so. <laughs> You're a brave oh, man. Just leave that camera live and <laughs> see what happens. Tim, how well, hard was it to, uh, to patch this a... through to the DS106 TV? Because given the concurrency limits, um, to actually use this in something like a classroom setting or the equivalent of a classroom setting with a some sort of online class, you probably have to do something like uh, what you're doing with DS106 TV and have the Hangout over here and piped out to some sort of broadcast platform like Justin.TV so that the people who can't get on the Hangout live with concurrency limit can still watch and participate in the chat over there. Was that a complicated thing to do? What I'm doing right now with Justin TV and DS106 TV? Well, I'm particularly piping the Google Hangout video stream through to it. Uh, it, it can be. Uh, it's getting a lot better. A lot of the free tools, like um, not so much Justin TV, but Livestream and Ustream are offering tools to be able to do screencasting. And that's basically what it is. You're screencasting what's on your desktop along with the audio from your desktop and then pushing it out to the web. Um, and more of those streaming services are finding that that's what people want to do, whether it be to show software or show uh, a PC game that they're playing. Um, so I know those tools have it built in. What we do at DS1, what we do at um, DTLT is, is a bit more advanced because it uses uh, Wirecast software and it's um, quite a bit more expensive. Uh, but it does give a lot more options. So that's how I'm able to do like the green screen effect um, and all that kind of stuff. I really love your green screen right now, though, with the because you can see the uh, the attachments to the wall. Yeah, see, you all get to see the uh, what do they call it? The fourth wall um, on DS106 TV. You can't see any of that. So um, behind the scenes, Timmy boy. Yeah. Take there off you your go. shirt like Brian Jack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only Brian Jackson gets to show up nude on DS106 TV. He's earned that right. <laughs> This teacher's on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> you teachers in your summers. <laughs> on vacation in the kitchen, too. And Zach, you're back from the woods, I see. Oh, my goodness. Am, yeah. Stalls. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Oh. Did you see any bears, Zach? No, you know, all the megafauna, uh, the, the vaunted uh, megafauna of Glacier National Park was shy, so no no megafauna at all. Oh, noise professor, what's up? Hey. <laughs> so, saw no bears, either black or brown, no um, mountain goats, no bighorn sheep, no moose, none of it. Rip off. Total rip off. <laughs> You should get your money back from that. National I saw Glacier. Colombian ground squirrel, and I saw pronghorn in the uh, Idaho Badlands. So, and I was attacked by a ptarmigan. <laughs> oh no! Are you all right? Yeah, it was on the path, and it was defending a nest, and it ran up and grabbed my pants, and it wouldn't let go. It was all. <laughs> Birds are awesome because they're brave. They'll attack, and they'll they'll fight. You know, like sparrows will fight a golden eagle. They don't care. They just <laughs> they get crazy. The uh, the land bound birds are especially brave. Yeah. <laughs> so Jim, are you having problems getting on? Yeah. Rowan is too, and I'm not sure what that issue is. Pilot Rowan, error. I figured it might be a bandwidth issue, just because I don't know Australia. Yeah, that's what it was. I'm blocking you, Jim. Jim. <laughs> that's. <laughs> Jim is not strong with the Google. <laughs> I think it's probably a technological issue. Rowan, Zach says pilot error. Rowan Makes just messaged me on the Skype, so he wants to know if we can see mm -hmm. him trying to come in. Oh, he still, he still lives? <laughs> I, thought, I thought there was something that tragically happened. To Rowan Peter? I didn't know he's still alive. You're one to talk, Jim Groom. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Talking about tragic events. It's crashing on him. You should update your browser. Is that Brian Jack? He looks like a rock star. 
I don't know if that's Brian Jack. He's got clothes on. It's hard to tell. Yeah, I've changed. <laughs> I love the way it changes camera. So, Ben, you, you think You can change that... the camera too, eh, Jim? <laughs> if you click on people's faces. Oh, can you? Yeah. Yeah, totally. You should be able to control it. Oh, how about that? You can choose Although who you I... want to look at. <laughs> <laughs> Just like a real hangout. <laughs> I'm going to look at Noise Professor. I love your photo. <laughs> yeah. So mysterious. Now then, if I wanted to switch back to automatic, though, is there a way to do that? I, I think if you just leave it. it oh, no, it doesn't. Oh, maybe maybe click the, the above screen, not on the picture, but sort of the white area. I think then it goes back to no. shuffling itself. I'm stuck on a confused Julia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my oh, someone. Oh, it's gone. What's going on? Take it off me. <laughs> All right. So, Ben, you're saying this is too advanced for a regular user? This is, I, I think this is just too advanced for a mere TA. I think that's what's going on here. Oh, for a TA, <laughs> not for a regular user. It's just too advanced for Jim Groom. <laughs> just for Jim Groom, it's too advanced. That, Today in Google fair. Hangout, guess who's well, staring at you? Everybody can be as kind of thought, thoughtful as you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's new. He'll get over it. <laughs> I was trying to work it out to where they all could hear you, too. We have you on a big screen over there, a big plasma, <laughs> but... <laughs> Is that the camera? Take your shirt I invented off. Google Plus. <laughs> <laughs> it's somewhat reassuring to see him after all the, the turn of events. Ah, uh, yes. No, that's not that's not really him. Oh. Not until next week. That's fine. It's fine. Yeah, that true. could be a doom or a groom. I don't know, I'm a sock puppet. What do I know? Right. I'm still trying to get on. What air are you Is getting? That showing me there? Uh, no, this is Noise Professor. It doesn't have a camera. Um, it says you come and you go. But, so Rowan says that his browser keeps crashing. God, the color's horrible. Stop this. Rowan's browser is crashing. What does yours do, Jim? Mine says I'm already in the call. Oh. It says he's already in the call. Perils of IE6. Yeah. <laughs> Nicely done, Rowan. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he better not be using such a joke, right? It is a joke. <laughs> I, I'm, you're going in a special circle if <laughs> you're using IE6. Google Plus works its best in Windows ME. <laughs> Zach, your facial expression doesn't really give it away, so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so My nonverbals so are not coming through. Yeah, <laughs> No, Zach, how do you not have a camera? I have it. I just don't know where it is. You have it. You're censoring yourself is what you're saying. Exactly. I'm not good enough for your camera. I want to be shirtless, but I don't want to be, you know, on camera. And see, somehow, you know, I knew that Scott Lowe wasn't going to go to bed and he was going to join us. <laughs> well, he was still on the radio. I'm like, you're on the radio? Come join the hangout. Yeah, I want to see him. If he puts he said, up. Oh, I've got to. I've got to get to bed. I. I can't stay up. Oh, it's four a.m. Although he left too. I wonder if he's having problems getting in. Well, people, update your browsers. They can't or hear something. me. <laughs> Maybe what? six is the limit. No, ten is the limit. I tried it earlier. Ten is the limit. I joined the uh, the downs chat. I'm using I'm using Chrome for what it's worth. I'm using Firefox. But it did ask me to update. I like I got a message. Did it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yes, I'm using Safari. So what now, did we decide? This is basically going to distract our students from doing anything. It's certainly really distracting <laughs> me from getting any work done. <laughs> no, no, I was high fiving my wife. She's uh, she's uh, creating some. Bring her over. Some summer wear. Here, come, come on over. In, they want to say hi. They want to say hi. Introduce us to your wife, Ben. It's yeah. Mrs. Rhymes. Fashion show continues. <laughs> we all want to know Mrs. Rhymes. Hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> How are you all? Doing nice well. Nice to meet you. Flip flops. 
I really liked your kidney me. reading. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. It was excellent. Awesome. Okay, I have to do my job thing to suck. What was that? Is that a flip flop? We're what? We're hippies? Jim wants to know what you're holding. Is it a flip flop? We it is a flip flop. I don't know if you guys can see me. This computer's kind of doing strange things. But I mm -hmm. um I made I made you tops because my flip flops were really icky and plasticky and cheap. Oh wow. She so. fixed the she made the flip flop and fixed so. it into a new yes. design. <laughs> nice. Thanks. Crafty. Yes, very. <laughs> do not scare Ben Rhymes' wife. <laughs> this is actually what I do for a living on the side. I'm an I'm an artist, so. What do they make in Michigan these days? Flip flops. Flip flops. <laughs> Second hand. That's right. <laughs> oh no. The economy is really bad here, so you know. Yeah. <laughs> You have to learn to listen to nothing that Jim Groom says. <laughs> I don't know why I chose to work with him. <laughs> oh, you love it! It's a good time. Well, I'm going to pass you back off to Ben now, although he disappeared, so he might be back in a minute. All right, sounds good. All right. I really want to switch back to no, the I got, video auto switch. I got the auto video out. thing going again, but I don't know why. I wonder if I just need to leave it or not. I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> I'll leave it on Julia on the phone. That's what I have. And it on. then <laughs> it will either start auto switching or we'll all just watch Julia. That's what I have. She's working hard. Look at. <laughs> She's making serious faces. <laughs> Brings Google stocking to a whole new level. I would love to be able to call her. Ask Julie what her number is. Yeah. Cut it out. That's the only way I could join this conversation. Jim, Jim wants to call you on the phone. I'm going to loop him in. Get the number. What do you say, Jim? No, seriously. Jim, what's going on? What's your browser? Stop using IE. Did you get it? Julia says stop using IE, Jim. They can't hear you all because there was massive feedback when I plugged it into the speakers. So, from my microphone to the speakers, you would just get an echo. Why are you putting me on my on here? Well, I'm hoping it'll switch back to the video switcher thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I don't know. You know, it's funny. It's kind of <laughs> pathetic in a way that it keeps trying to make room for a run and <laughs> gym, and then they can't get on. It makes me feel sad in my heart. <laughs> and then, they're like trying to hang out. They're like the kids that are trying to hang out, but they can't bust into the circle, you know. I know. <laughs> now the other thing is, I could switch to YouTube here. Get off my porch. Yeah, exactly. Switch to YouTube. Yeah. What are you gonna play and for then, us? Stop well, I don't. I can't. So what comes up? Like, does it? Does that come up for everybody? Like the menu, and then we each have our own menu, or? <laughs> Uh, when I was in another hangout, or I was in this one and someone hit it, uh, Ben did, and it said, do you want to watch with them or something? Whatever the top menu item, it said, like, Ben is in YouTube, do you want to watch with them or something like that? Yeah. I saw that briefly, but it went away very quickly. I, I took it back off because oh. I can't reach my keyboard from where I'm sitting. Brian, are you not committing to this conversation? You can't sit down? No, sorry, I'm doing, like, five different things at once. <laughs> Make I got, uh, coffee. I got right coffee now. going right over here. Mm. Uh, oh, coffee. coffee is a good idea. I, I do have the YouTube window open. I'm, I may be silent, but I'm with you. <laughs> so, but here's the question. If Noise Professor, if Zach, if you put a video in there, there, will it play for all of us? Or how does that work? Play some um, sound circuit, uh, bent, circuit bent stuff. I don't know what, to, I don't know how to do that. Click YouTube? What do you, what do you mean? <laughs> Oh, I'll do it. You do it. What do I do? Tell me what to do and I'll do it. I don't it's like I'm not with a bunch of tech-savvy people or anything. <laughs> What's going on here? I worry for our future. Come to find out some of them don't have webcam. Some of them are using Internet Explorer. Some of them don't have a shirt. What is noise <laughs> <laughs> on YouTube? Shirt market oh, is completely... 
<laughs> yeah, there's an excellent series of blog posts. Shirts is an essential tool of 21st century I didn't learning. Wanna, I didn't want to miss the hangout. That's where all the cool kids are. <laughs> there's very little that will make me feel awkward, Joe. <laughs> you will learn that about me. Yeah. Go <laughs> Give him a massage. Is the video playing for you or not? How, how do I decide what video I want to play? Oh. Oh, they all laughed, but then. <laughs> Indeed. Is that Jim Groom causing a ruckus in the background? Because we're trying to be professional here. Of course. So I never saw a video. Did anyone else? I'm uh, watching a video, but nobody else can see it. Yeah, it's spinning right now. It's, it's telling me you changed the video. Mm. Has anybody been following the, the Raspberry Pi project? Because I was just starting to think about if you have one of those Raspberry we're, Pi devices. We're making a Raspberry Tart project right now in the oven. The yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> My Jack's got one going, too. Jim, he doesn't even have a camera. Yeah. Oh, so Jim wants you to put on your Nacho Libre mask and <laughs> come on video, Zach. Raspberry Pi. Raspberrypi.org. I've not heard of this. Because I was thinking, if you had one of these devices and they're supposed to come out later this calendar year, you know, I don't know if it has enough power to run something like this, but it's designed to plug into a TV and and run off um, some other external. I can't remember if it has an external power brick or not. It's very small, it's meant to be kind of a, a low power uh, smartphone equivalent processor. Uh, to, to try oh, I have seen this. Yeah. For, for computing tips. Oh my god, and, I learned and, to program on something like that when I was like in grade five. Well, I, I, I found an, an Apple IIe emulator the other day um, and pulled it up and showed it to my eight year old. Said, let's, let's work through some Apple soft stuff. He seemed kind of interested. Now, is the box on it, is that a webcam or is it a microphone? There, there, there's a little. I think there's a camera module that they're going to make for it, but that's okay. not part of the base spec. Uh -huh. But I'm thinking about what could you do with one of those with a camera module? Could it be a tiny something like that would fit in your pocket? You'd plug into a TV and you could use for something like this. Right. And what would that do if you could? And how much is this? Wrong. Scroll. Switch back. Two. That that video really truly was epic. So you oh, are you watching hold YouTube, right. and I am not. Yeah, get with it. And Why watch the YouTube? I was watching Raspberry well, <laughs> Pi, but now that and now I'm distracted to watch. If I if I click YouTube, I just get choose a video or search for one. I don't think I'm getting what anybody else types in there. Yeah, I'm not getting it. I'm, see. And I'm seeing the, the featured video playlist, and then the video is actually playing behind kind of like the see-through YouTube thing. Nice. And I'm getting a big fat donut. Yeah. Although yeah, the Julian, good news is that I've got YouTube it back on video switching. Up above you. Not for me. Maybe because you're not sharing your videos, Zach. That's exactly right. It's a trade. Right. It's a quid pro quo. Yeah. You gotta give a little to get. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think Hangout is probably the coolest feature of Google Plus so far. I don't know that I'll use anything else, but I would jump in here just to use this. Hey, nice meeting you guys. Thanks yeah. for the advice on the TV. No problem. Yeah. Joko! But then... But then the problem that I have with that, though, is with Skype. You leaving? Come by every so often. I've been here almost a week. This is the first time I see you. 
I was trying to make sure you got Chipotle. I appreciate that, I too. You. What did you do? He hanged out with his internet friends. Nothing but love, Joe. That's right. Nothing but love. <laughs> the internet is still with free. But my issue is with Skype, it's pretty easy for me to say, I mean, a lot of people already have Skype. You can get them to download it if they don't and set up an account. I don't necessarily want people to have to recommend people get a Google Plus account because it's a social network. Skype is just a piece of software and there's no, I don't know, I feel like I'm making someone get a Facebook account if I tell them you got to be in Google Plus in order to video chat with me. Well, it's a how, shame Scott Lowe well, can't get it. Until they're all it, in Google Plus. Well, isn't Skype making it more difficult to have those sorts of chats too? Does, was I don't know if this happened before or after the purchase by acquisition by Microsoft, but you're only allowed to have so many participants via a video chat, then you have to go Skype Pro or something like that. Right. Was, you can do four video, and then you have to pay to do what is it, ten or more? Right. I'm not yeah, even sure what so. the upper limit of Skype and, is. And but. actually, we ran into this problem when we were doing our uh, radio show. Um, there were a couple people that were on, you know, legacy, whatever versions of it. So we ran into some difficulties where I'm running Skype 5.0 and someone else is running uh, 3. Point something, and that was a pain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is no doubt easier. Well, I say it's easier to use, but so far we've had three people who have come and gone without even being able to broadcast. Um, Jim, Scott Lowe, Rowan. Yeah. And I don't know what that's about. I mean, for Jim, it doesn't seem to be a bandwidth issue because we're in the same office. But it's Jim. And Rowan's tried all, like, the three browsers so far. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not sure what that's about. Downs had a lot of people on his. I mean, I think he'd reached the upper limit 10 people yep. in his Hangout. That was great when we started talking about DS106 and all of a sudden Jim came in. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah, I cheated a bit with his Hangout because I wanted to actually see what it looked like and start getting this set up here with the green screen and everything. So I had, he was, he was my test. That's not cheating. It worked out good. He, yeah. was, he was doing a test too. He asked if, um, he wanted to see if this was going to be better than Blackboard. That was his discussion topic. I don't know if you caught that. I was like, what isn't better than Blackboard? <laughs> and, it, and then he said, he said, that's true. I'm thinking of using a brick with a note. <laughs> the, the rule that I made at the beginning was that apparently with Google+, the only thing you can talk about is Google+. So yes. if you're in a Hangout, all you can talk about is how amazing a Hangout is. <laughs> yes. It's a Mandelbrot set. It's awesome. Yeah. Scott Lowe seems to have the uh, international problem as well. Hmm. It's right. not just international, because it's Jim Grooms having the same problem. Well, he's sort of his yeah. own territory, though, so... <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you have to be on planet Earth, which is maybe Google+, Plus, right? <laughs> What's for breakfast, Brian Jack? Mm. I'm glad you asked, actually. <laughs> <laughs> We're into, uh, we're into pancakes. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Although they're they're leftover pancakes, so I was more ambitious yesterday. <laughs> leftover pancakes? That's just weird. In my house, oh, those become many. dog biscuits. I made too many. <laughs> Say hi, Harrison. Oh. Say hi. Say hi. Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yep, mine did that too. I guess I guess he doesn't have a lot to say right now. Sorry. <laughs> he's not a fan of that massive headset that you have, Ben. That's no, true. he's he's not. No. Get yourself some earbuds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yet another reason we don't want Jim to figure this whole thing out. <laughs> Scare your child. <laughs> <laughs> he's got my daughter up in arms. She was she was she was this close to, to, to want me to put her on Skype and how dare you banish my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> now are you listening with DS one oh six T V? Jim? Yeah. Are you? Beautiful. I love the way it looks. So Jim's following on DS106 TV. Oh, I gotta go back there. Is he typing in there? Oh, I don't know. Are you typing in the chat in there? 
Are you just watching and listening? I am. He is. Come on, Julia. <laughs> I'm here. Let me down. I'm here. Julia, you don't have to do anything that Jim Look says. Me and you are okay. Down. You I don't do ha whatever Jim Groom <laughs> tells me to. Whenever Jim Groom <laughs> tells me to. <laughs> I drink the Powerade. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. I need to take a shower aid. <laughs> shower aid? Too much information aid. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. It's quite switching. How does it know? What are you doing, Timmy, to switch on DS106 TV so it knows? Well, I figured out, Google Plus figured out how to switch again. So it's back to the video switching. So it's just doing it on its own. And but I have a section a of video. Are you screen capture just on that part? Yes. Uh -huh. uh huh. It's cropped down to just that section. So as it switches, it automatically updates, which is beautiful for something like this. I don't have to control that. Yeah, that's neat. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so no, what do people more. feel about the circles? Because I've read quite a few people say that circles are damaging to the web that they you know on the on the extreme end of the spectrum that the idea of circles is in inherent conflict to the idea of an open web agree or disagree <coughs> or does it have to be one or the other I disagree that's a better question. I had to create a whole new account for my circle right <laughs> I had to move to Columbia. <laughs> I had to move to Columbia, <laughs> become a whole new person. Well, there was a couple things. It was Scott Lowe's course, right? So there was the, Scott, the sock puppet thing. But really, I was getting a lot of my colleagues complaining. And the, last, the first hangout that I did, Ingenuity from Seattle, said that she stopped following me and a lot of people because they were just tweeting DS106 all the time, and it was driving her crazy. Well, I think there's so, a difference between... Ingenuity would stop following people because they tweet too much? About about DS106 and DS106 that's, radio. That seems. This is gonna get me blocked. But one she word: bunnies. Bunnies. <laughs> He's been tweeting a lot about rabbits this week. Oh, okay. Oh, well, that's funny. <laughs> See, I missed that. But I, anyway, so I thought I'd keep my Julia Forsyth account, whatever. Brock. I think there's a difference between circles and Google, because because you need something like circles. To manage the, you know, to manage the context, because that was always one of the gripes about Facebook. Is everybody was in one big pile, and so I don't think it's circles in, a, in and of themselves that are bad for the open web. I wonder if handing all this information about your circles and their structure over to Google or, or any single provider maybe is bad for the open web. But that doesn't mean circles are bad. It's about who manages them. If you could do federated circles, like you know. Uh, StatusNet is trying to do with federated microblogging, or Diaspora is trying to do with federated social networks, I think it could be just fine for the open web. Yeah, you know, nobody ever makes, you know, really eloquent arguments on Twitter, but the, the best, like, 140 character thing that I read on there in regards to the problem with Google is, I just handed over all my personal information to a company that drives around in a car taking pictures of my house. <laughs> and, you know... <laughs> It's this idea of at what point does it become too much? At what point do you, we step back and say, yeah, I, I, I don't know that I'm comfortable with this anymore. Then he realized he loved Big Brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. <clears throat> it's true. Freedom, uh, but, freedom is slavery. <laughs> yeah. Time to 1984 reference. 30 minutes. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> yeah, when talking about Google. We uh, could make yeah. um, our Hangout like our 30-second hate speech. We could just have There it. you go. <laughs> <laughs> but my thing with circles, it, it, I've read this. I'd, I don't know one way or the other what I feel about it, but uh, I've heard some people say that in real life, we don't act that way. We, As much as we think <laughs> that we... I mean, you might censor what you say depending on who you're with, but in general, in terms of what we do online, and really, you know, in terms of what we share with people, for the most part, 
we don't keep in the back of our head, all right, these are this set of people and I'm going to do this, and then these are this set of people <clears> and I'm going to do this. Having one or two, maybe. I can see that. You know, maybe three tops of, okay, just family and friends, just everybody else. But I'll be honest with you, since I've been on Google+, and I haven't put a whole lot out there, but the things that I've shared, I just keep the default settings. And my guess is that's what a lot of people are going to do. I haven't yet said, you know, when I start a Hangout, I only want to start it with this group. When I put a photo on there, I only want it to go to this group. That seems like even more work to me to manage a social network. I don't know. I wish there was Twitter. I wish in Twitter I could say I when I hashtag something that it was only for anybody who wants to hear about DS106. I know that's what TweetDeck is for, but not everybody uses that. That's what uh, Scott Leslie said. Tell your all your colleagues to use TweetDeck and just filter you up. <laughs> but I hate TweetDeck. Yeah, I, I hate TweetDeck too. If I well, get if you, uh, with Twitter anyway, it's still public. But if you like at message someone, like if you at the radio. Twitbot, then it only shows up to people who are following the Twitbot. Is that true? Right. Unless you put so. a dot in front, is that what that's about? Yeah. yeah, don't put a dot in front. Just make it an at reply, and then it, the at reply only is visible to your followers who are following the at person. Although TweetDeck, I think, has a has a feature where you can turn it on where you can Slow see everybody's around. ads. <clears throat> well, and that's our own problem, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I can't imagine what a Twitter stream looks like with everybody's at replies. That would get old quick. <laughs> I never I used that, I, so there you go. There you go. I appreciate the fact that Twitter is that open um, and that it's easy to just go in and, and, and hack or subvert or add to a hashtag if you find out, you know, just just having that out there and uh, forgive me I wasn't listening on the first part of the conversation so if I'm saying something that someone else already said you can stop me but um, uh, there's some people in the circles that I run in that are on Google Plus going oh this is gonna be so great for education and I can finally separate my personal life from my public life and my colleagues and everything and I don't I can I can see that appeal, but I don't like that. I, I like what's going on. I like the fact that my worlds kind of mix and mingle and everything because uh, it's all sorts of great stuff that I get to find that I wouldn't have otherwise. Well, Brian Lamb wrote a blog post about it because I was watching, or Stella was, but it was me, I was watching him having a conversation back and forth with Scott Leslie about a, a WordPress plugin. And so it's something that really, he was he could have emailed Brian, but he just put it out in Twitter and it was a WordPress plugin about Media Wiki or something. I thought that's really cool so I was able to follow the link and find out about it but if they hadn't had that public conversation I never would have known and something like Google Circles if right. I wasn't in their circle of you know VC campus or whatever their circle would be for those two people then I never <laughs> would have seen it and I never would have learned about it so I could see that being a huge disadvantage. And here's the thing like I mean you just think in terms of DS106 okay that particular person um, did not want to get all of those DS106 tweets, but if you sequester the kind of things that you update to just go out to DS106 people, then the rest of the web never gets to hear about DS106. They never even get it in passing. So I think that's what the problem is, is that, okay, it may be one thing to say, I just want to talk to, you know, there may be things that I just want to share with my family. If I want to post a picture of my daughter and I'm this, you know, I'm very concerned with that, then I just want to post it to them. I can almost see that. But in terms of, oh, I'm only going to post my programming stuff to people that I know are programmers, then that's the kind of stuff that suddenly you have this disconnect in terms of open uh, communication. <clears throat> I think it's kind of on the note of the getting spam, but I was sort of thinking with uh, with my class anyway, like I teach high school, so on a lot of levels I like the fact that I can kind of interact like I do on Facebook with a lot of people from my Twitter network in a way that because I my Twitter profile and everything about me is sort of the public high school teacher, so I don't really get to maybe share certain articles or make certain comments that I now can if I send them out to a certain circle. But I was also thinking for my kids, if they're old enough to be over the privacy thing, I don't think they are. What is it, 16 for Google Plus? Oh, I don't know. I thought I heard 18 somewhere, but I don't. 18, yeah, so even worse. Um, I didn't even realize they had settings on that. Yeah, because one of my. I mean, I guess you have to. But. One, of, one of my students tweeted, like, crap, uh, because I told Google the truth, 
I yeah. can't sign up for a Google Plus account because he actually his account is filled out as him being 15. So, but yeah. it would be cool to I don't know maybe Google is going to put part of it in the the Ed Suites or anything like that. But you know we do lots of things for for projects in our class that last over a couple of months and it's broken down into small committees. And so in that case, like the circles of the hangouts and maybe even the message board sort of social network of it could be used to just make sure that. Well, maybe the teachers need to know what's going on in every committee, but you know, the people on the food committee for our camping trip don't need to know what program is doing all the time, so they don't need to be sending everything out to everybody. Like it could be good in just terms of setting up like a small community and then differentiating who sees and reads what. I, I think you can look at the circles model from two perspectives: either the privacy perspective, where you ask the question, "Do you filter?" at the source of something and say, I'm only going to send it out to certain people versus letting your listeners, followers, whatever, filter what's coming in their stream in terms of what they want to see. But there's also kind of what you were saying, Brian, about the information overload. You know, does the food committee need to see the program committee? And that this could be a, a model for keeping the information flow to a manageable level, particularly as people are, but again, you can say, do I do that by creating circles on the outset and sending this only to the program committee, or do I rely every, on everybody to filter uh, their own inputs? That's what I don't actually understand about circles. If somebody adds you to their circle, what does that mean? Like, does that mean mm -hmm. they start seeing the things that you post publicly? Or that mean that they start posting to you? If when you post, you post it to a circle that they are in, they but what will if see you it. don't add them to your circle? What if my stalker, for example, then has only just added your me to his circle? What does that mean? Only if you do public. The public setting is everybody, no matter what. And then if you add them to a circle, then it doesn't matter. But if you limit what you post to just certain circles, then people who are following you aren't going to see that. Yeah, even if they add you to a circle, they're not granted access until you give it to them. So I think really adding somebody to a circle is creating for you a way to send something to them yeah. rather than the other, rather than making your stuff viewable generally. But if I don't want, well, I don't want to see what that person has to say, and they've added me to a circle. You won't see it. Okay. What? No. Yeah, yeah you would. If if they add her to their circles, she Julia is not going to see their posts. Oh, oh right, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, because won't won't put her on their out list. I think what it is is if you don't, you could see it unless you make you your post them public. They don't see what you post. Well, but they're but not, not going to come into her stream unless she's <laughs> following them in some way, though. Mm -hmm. You know, their stuff might be public. That's right. But she's not going to go out and search for that person and start reading their things. She could see it if she wanted to. They've put a way out to to make that stuff public to her. But unless you add someone to your circle, your main home stream is not going to include their posts. Yeah. And I won't see their and they won't see anything that I put unless it's public. Correct. Now, what's the default setting? Is is it public? Uh, it asks you every time you post something. No, Who do you want to share this? The default setting with? is private. I think. Is it your circles, I think? Yeah. So all circles is the right. default. I don't know. I've been playing out. with yeah. the, the just send to one person thing to see if it shows up, but has anybody seen those that I've posted to just the one person? I, I did no, one. I've... No. No. So you don't see that. So, okay, so you can send a message to just one person and nobody else sees it. Now, I just tried to send something, and it's, it's showing me public as my default. Maybe there's a, maybe there's a place to set that. Yeah. What? Or maybe the last used setting, maybe? Yeah, I thought mine that, was doing the last oh, use. Okay, that could be it. I think the last thing I posted was public. Yeah, like I said, I think it's an interesting idea. I just think about, I like what you said about filters. I think that's the key word. Where do you put the filter? Is the filter, should it sit on the end of the person who's pushing the information out, which it seems is what Google Plus is doing, or should the filter sit on the person who's receiving the information to decide what they want to see, you know, which is what anybody can do. Like, like that person said, we'll just get TweetDeck and start doing that. You know, that's a software limitation of certain clients allowing you what level of filtering you can. But the web as a whole, it doesn't work 
when people decide to filter what they put out. I mean, that's just a philosophy of mine, is that if you're going to start filtering who you send information out to, things like Twitter could not have happened. Hold so. on, is Rowan Peter in the room? <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, I, he I is. see an icon there. He is here, he's listening Hi, Julia, to us. Sorry. Hi everyone, I'm sorry I'm, I'm late. <laughs> yeah. no, Rowan. No, no. You're just doing laundry. Uh, <laughs> Hey, was that you, uh, noise professor? No, it was never me. Are you wearing a shirt? Because that was the theme earlier. That's the only <laughs> question we have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Brian I am came actually. On shirtless. Um, yeah, the reason why. <laughs> oh, well, that's provocative. <laughs> I don't mind. No, no, I'm sorry, I'm late, everyone, and I am here, but I'm, I'm actually uh, doing the Hangout via um, VMware Fusion, so that's why you can't see me, but I can see all of you, and it's uh, good to see you all again. Um, yeah, thanks. Uh, let's go. Let's let's talk. I'll just, um, as Noise Professor might say, uh, what did I miss? But it's okay. I'll um, figure it out when I figure it out as I get along, so yeah. Well, it's interesting because you be were here. having thanks. issues. Uh, Scott Lowe was having issues getting in. Jim Groom was having issues getting in. And I'm not sure where the issue was. For for you, I guess the browser was crashing. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. I kept on getting this. Uh, rep uh, I got a, what's what era number was it? Number three. And I got a 19 as well. And oh, um, yep. all that kind of stuff. So That's the one. Yep. But yeah, I just was... Doing, I got that in uh, Chrome, Firefox, and so. He's using a virtual uh, machine. I'm not using um, Mac now. I'm running um, VMware Fusion. You know the Windows. desktop virtualization. I'm running Windows now, sure. and then running um, uh, Firefox in that. So sort of, and then that can't pick up my eyesight camera. So that's why I'm sound only. But um, I can see all of you, and you all look very nice. So. <laughs> <laughs> Don't lie to me, Rowan. <laughs> no, no, Timmy boy, you're looking excellent. <laughs> okay, keep going. It's nice to hear you at least, uh, Rowan. Please do. Thanks, Julia. It's, sorry, I can't. You can't see me, but um, it's just dark here. <laughs> There's not much to see. I'll Great. be interested to see if Google Plus takes off in terms of the people who currently use Facebook. I. I do think that it has this sort of techy feel to it right now, and maybe that's just every social network at its infancy. But Facebook, I mean, it wasn't techies at its infancy, it was college students. And I wonder if that sort of sets the tone. Is, is Google Plus going to do more damage? I mean, here we go back to does it have to do damage or not? But um, like Jason said, there is a limit to how much you can, um, you know, how much you can follow. So I think for most people, that's going to be one or two social networks at max. So is it going to do more damage to Twitter, where I would argue the people are... I, I don't want to say the people on Twitter are smarter or more advanced, but um, you don't, I, I, my mom and dad aren't on Twitter, you know, whereas they are on Facebook. So there's clearly a different uh, ecosystem there. Um, so I wonder which one is going to lose more in terms of market share or if either of them are in general or is Google Plus not going to take off? Did, uh, I don't know if you saw that thing. I'll post a link to it. but. Uh... Alan Liddell posted something that um, was about who's actually going to lose, and it's, it's mm -hmm. not so much Twitter or Facebook as much as it's probably Microsoft, which is kind of funny because this whole little slideshow that I just put the link to yesterday while I was goofing around and all this stuff, I'm going to like you know my Google Docs, I'm working on this essay, uh, I got my Google Reader back and forth to Google Plus, and then I noticed you know like the actual cool. Uh, singularity of it is that all that stuff in the top bar never changes, right? Like your plus updates and comments all go in the same place that I get my Gmail updates, that my calendar would theoretically be telling me I had stuff to do. Uh, like that uh, unification is probably going to be the most devastating because it's, it's everything that formerly was housed on your computer is now on the cloud, kind of back to that Big Brother conversation. But now it's all in this one place where our social network and email and everything is all just brought together. Well, there are already seen. And that, and that as well, uh, just because Twitter is where we find like our fellow sort of nerds, Twitter is also like full of the most vacuous garbage ever, too. Like it makes <laughs> Facebook look purposeful. 
Sure. But it depends on who you follow, and, and we've seen... Oh, totally. Yeah, totally. I have high schoolers show me their, their stream sometimes, though, and it's like, wow. <laughs> well, the other thing is, you, you've heard about... I remember reading an article several months ago about, and I can't remember where it came from, who made the argument that Twitter was more of a broadcast platform, you know, this notion of people following celebrities, as opposed to a, to a real two-way... And it seemed to suggest that the people who use Twitter the way most people I know who are on Twitter use it as an actual communication platform are in the decided minority. Did anybody else see that one? No, but I would agree with you that it's I like totally, how I text yeah. with all my online friends. <laughs> most people think of it as a way to, to listen to, uh, you know, Demi Moore. And, yeah. You know. My, um... <laughs> My sister-in-law uses it that way. She never tweet. I mean, once in a blue moon, she might tweet something out. You know, nothing compared to you know what her Facebook statuses would be. Uh, but she does follow a ton of people. And when I asked her about it, I was like, "You never use Twitter, do you?" And she says, "I use it every single day. I go on there all the time, several times a day. I just don't say anything." <laughs> Which you know, it's mind-boggling to people like us that you know. <laughs> That's that's where we say most stuff, and we have you know these, this two way conversation, but um, it's like my IRC. It's I, like I used to use IRC like that. I liked it. It's better than that though because it's visual. Mm. And it's got links and images, but you know it's a relay chat to me. Does uh, Google Plus have an API? Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm more open. Yeah, I'm just thinking that um, yeah, the IRC comparison is interesting, uh, but. Uh, the cool thing about IRC was you have the F serve and all that kind of stuff, but maybe IRC in some ways with the, um, the channels is uh, analogous to uh, the Hangout. So, um, because the, so here's hangout. a question I have: Is Go there ahead. an API? And because, for instance, there's a, a you can get um, Facebook add-ons that have bi-directional Twitter communication, and so is there such a thing in this ecosystem? If so, that would be awesome, because if I could just pull Twitter into here, that would be sweet, because this adds all the things that Twitter doesn't do, and that you have to go to another system to do movie night, to do anything the way that we nerds use Twitter. You know, this has all that sort of stuff wrapped it up into it, and that would be I, awesome. Under settings, I saw data liberation, which seems to be that would where it would belong. Yeah, I that's did. where you can take your stuff out. But so they're like being very export? open about the fact that if you want to pull a zip file of all the photos you ever uploaded, wow. they make it very easy to do that. Mm. All your posts, things like that, which is awesome. Uh, but yeah, I don't think they have an API yet. You know, that doesn't mean that there's not one in development or they can't, they can't do that. Uh, but they've made it pretty clear, I think, that right now Google Plus is, you know, a beta beta, you know, not just beta in Google terms of we're going to slap that on there on Gmail for five years, but actual, you know, this is in development as you're using it, and we're just doing our best to hold it all together. But they're making changes to it daily, so, and I heard, yeah. like, somebody posted that thing about, you know, give your feedback, because they're changing things based on what we want, so if that's, I mean, that would be awesome, right? That's the kind of stuff. I forget where I read it, cool. but I think their goal is to make it public within months, not, not years. So now well, whether that means it'll be public and still in development or not, I don't know. We should all just tell them to buy Twitter. Be done with it. <laughs> <laughs> Will you just do it already? I don't think they'd sell. They should buy it before Twitter starts putting those ads in. When's that happening? Because that's going to change the flavor of everything. When Google buys it. <laughs> 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 the obvious answer. <laughs> September is when the ads come. Yeah. Jim says in September to uh, Twitter. Get ready. And do you, uh, with the ads, do you get to uh, choose the ads or sort of filter the ads to what your um, preferences may be? Yeah, just give it a plus no. one. <laughs> I want more mustard I, commercials. No, no, with the, <laughs> with the Twitter ads, I mean, uh, do you get to, based on who you follow, they'll pump uh, specific advertising to you? Is that the plan? It's a good question. I'm not sure. All right, I see. Well, they would make it, I would think they would con make it context specific, wouldn't they? I mean, isn't that why they collect yeah. so much data yeah. on? So. Yeah. You'd think, but the sponsored mm -hmm. trending topics are. I mean, that's aren't. the most valuable. Are they? They're going to try and sell Brian Jack a shirt. <laughs> yeah. 
They can sense the need. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, <laughs> they find the niche and then they Everybody's explore. talking about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> when they get the voice ad data gathering, I'm screwed. What do you think Google Voice is for? <laughs> yeah. Crap. <laughs> Can't get away from it. What else? What else do people want to talk about? Anything? Do you have to get back to work? Yeah, kind of. Don't no. talk about that. <laughs> it's, isn't it almost the end of the day for you guys? What? It's 1 o'clock. You've got a few more hours to go? 2 o'clock in uh, Eastern. Yeah, it's 2 o'clock. I have uh, two and a half more hours to go. Uh, you guys were my wake-up call today, so I'm going to get my day started when we're done here, I suppose. It, although it's 11, I'm a huge bum today. But. Although I have to point out for people who don't realize that Rowan is the real trooper here mm -hmm. because it is actually, what, Come on, 4 a.m.? 4 a.m.? It is now, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and three oh, when you started trying to get into this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Rowan, That's did you get to see Nigel uh, when he was in I Melbourne? To... Yes, I did. Actually, he. Um, Why didn't yeah, you broadcast? He, I, um, yeah, we met. Uh, in what way? <laughs> <laughs> On the radio, of course. No, no, no. That, did you know him uh, already? No. Be before DS no, no, Radio, I only knew him from. No, I had no idea who he was. I didn't even know he, what he looked like or anything like that. So I was just, and his plane was late, and I was waiting at the, um, at the, at the hotel, hanging out in the lobby, um, there for, for quite some time, and then, um, and the, and the concierge kind of guys were kept on asking, "Hey, can we help you, sir? I'm just waiting for a guy." <laughs> See, you're always having just waiting for a guy that I don't uh, know. <laughs> yeah. No, it's all right. But no, it was all right. We met in the end, and I, I took him out, and um, we had dinner and discussed. Um, I don't know, just had a chat and hung out. And he was he was here for a conference, so, and uh, it was good. He's a good guy, so uh, yeah, it was good. It was good fun to uh, hang out with uh, and uh, meet Nigel. someone from um, yeah DS one hundred and six. Like uh, so, that Anybody was the Pacific know. Rim, or yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was good. Good time. Go spelunking. And, uh, hmm. So next time, no, no, not not in the city of Melbourne. No, there's no. Actually, there is. <laughs> there is. Um, going into the large drains is very popular here. So, but no, I don't think he was up for that. Oh, Julia's working again. <laughs> <laughs> Work it, Julia. <laughs> Let's try and make her crack up and ruin her phone call. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <it's awesome>. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I think it was um, what I the f to... one of the first days of the whole uh, Summer of Oblivion thing. Maybe it was the f first week or two they were. I was going to be on DS106 TV and I'm Skyping in with Jim. And like five minutes before the class starts, someone calls me and, it, and I'm like, okay. So I answer the phone and it turned into one of those 25 minute things. And he's broadcasting me while I'm giving tech support to this person. And then I get off the phone and they're like, uh, so what do you think of that? And I'm like, of what? And they're like, Dr. Oblivion's missing, da da da. And I'm like, uh, wow. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are your thoughts on this meta <laughs> role-playing video game class we're having? <laughs> it's interesting. Um, you know, I don't think... <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the idea of um, turning a course into a game where the students participate and where they're getting excited about it um, has legs. You know, I don't, I don't think that Summer of Oblivion, as it as it happened this summer would ever happen again or work really um, you know it needs to be refined for sure but I think the idea of um, create you know especially with this digital storytelling class not that it can be used with other content areas but that you could have a um, digital storytelling class create a whole story around the actual class and create roles for themselves and for others and really get involved with it um, <coughs> is awesome 
Yeah, because that's sort of what happened with the, the spring DS-106 anyway, and I assume any time it happens, it just becomes, you know, all these little stories make it together to make this, you know, and that's why, like, all the visual art assignments and everything, you know, like, I, when the radio first started, that cake song, like, we were building a religion, uh, Comfort Eagle was, like, always on the auto DJ, and it was just, like, that time for me was very much, like, about the, <laughs> the, the class becoming, like, this larger culture, because it was about all these different stories to coming coming together. And then with the summer course, it was like, well now, but what if that story was just all made up, you know, for shits and giggles and we just went as far with it as we could. And that's kind of like the, the experiment is when it's all fictionalized, there's really no limit to where you can sort of run away with it too. And I think that, yeah, the energy just exploded. But is that working because it's one authentic and be unknown? I mean, I'm, I'm guessing Groom knows what's going on here, but you're not always sure. And you know that the students are kind of, you know, everybody no else is kind of along for the ride. And just and, and the fact that, you know, if, if everybody knew what the plot was, or even the framework of the plot, I don't think it would work as well. I think it's uh, that everybody's really embedded in the mystery. I don't know. There's some students. I mean, the far credit students, I worry about them a lot, actually. <laughs> Mm. My heart goes up to them. I watch some of the reactions, and there's a couple of the kids who are, like, it's it's giving them a cognitive dissonance. The one guy, he says, "What's with a different teacher every week? I can't take this. I can't. I can't handle these different instructional strategies. What's going on?" Do and not feel bad for those students. They will fail. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel bad for them because we're supposed to be. I mean, it's. You're, you're opening it up to all these people mm. coming in and we're causing, I don't know, sometimes we cause interference and we, we get so much in, so into it, but we don't have to keep the same deadlines. Like, if I don't want to do an assignment, I don't have to. But they do, you know, right? And, so there's and all this distracting and they're perfectly, stuff going on. I, I should be clear about this. They're graded on the work that they create for the course, and I think the only actual assignment that had anything to do with the narrative was the missing poster. Other than that, they're completely free to ignore the narrative, and they get the emails with the assignments. If they want to be that kind of student, that it's like, tell me how I pass a class, you know, give me my assignments, I do them, and I'll get my A, they can be that kind of student. But I think the course pushes them to be something more, to really get engaged and involved in it. So, yeah, I think there should be some pushback there. I think it should say, hey, you know, get involved with this, care about this, get engaged. If they're not, yeah, okay, th there are ways that they can still pass the class, and they're, and they're very clear, I think. You know, they can ignore that other stuff, but, you know, I think that's a shame. Well, I'm not sure that they actually got that there was role-playing going on. I can't believe that would be the case, but this person yeah. in, in particular seemed to be quite confused. I think you're right. I think I think there were some that were confused because it's an online class, right? I mean, they're never meeting in person, so so for they some had of true them. allegiances to Jim Groom, and they didn't, <laughs> have, or Doctor Oblivion, which I'm like confused about. But anyway, <laughs> because the performance was so seamless, I think that's. that's <laughs> Come on. You guys look like seamless. you're making it up on the fly. No. I would argue against no that. <laughs> Actually, no, no. Um, it, it looked very convincing from here. Well, you know, I I wondered, like, you know, I was like, okay, do they have an idea where this is going? Do they know what's happening or what's doing? And I definitely got my answer mm. when I came in, and it was like every morning, it was like, all right, where, what are we doing today? It it is fly by the seat of your pants. Decide exactly. Uh, what the narrative is going to be, what we could do. And one time, uh, yesterday, I go to lunch, I came back, they're like, we changed everything. And I'm like, what, what are you doing here? <laughs> so, you know, um, but it's fun. It. And the thing, the thing about it is, what well, the thing about it is, it's only a um, five week course because it's summer. So it's really intense. You know, so I, I'd be really interested, I know Jim is too, of what a 13 week course looks like where you can really build something and flesh it out a whole lot more than just it feels like stuff has to change really often because the course is over on Tuesday you know so it's like how do you finish this up without it being boring if you were to map the narrative arc I like the idea of having you know something happen and then you have to, there's and then maybe step away from it I think of the daily sort of changing of it added to the confusion so maybe like 
Dr. Oblivion goes missing or whatever, you know, in, in any such na situation. There's something that mo that prompts us to have a narrative about it. I love that idea. I thought that was brilliant. I think in a 13 week class, you could stretch it out and make a narrative a part of the puzzle where in the, in the summer of Oblivion, since it's so compressed, like Tim was saying, you feel like it's really driving the whole thing. And maybe in a longer class, it wouldn't have to do that. It could be just a piece of it. Hmm. Yeah, because you and want, the characters, I mean, um, what you want is you want the back. students to be doing work surrounding, you know, what you're talking about. And the thing about it with this five-week course is, you know, I mean, they have a few days to do their video assignment. They have, you know, like two days to do their web story. So they, there's a lot of assignments that happen in very rapid pace since it's only a five-week course. So it's like if you if you try to take it slow there, you don't have a narrative because there was no time to even do, you know, anything so I agree with you though I would I would love to see what it would look like in a 13 week course and I interrupted you Rowan what were you gonna say uh, uh, just that uh, yeah the characters could sort of dro uh, uh, drop in and drop out throughout the, um, the longer course and they could maybe um, get a bit more depth and um, uh, sorry, I just lost my train of thought. Sorry about that, Timmy. <laughs> You're fine. No one Excuse me one moment. <laughs> <laughs> Got some laundry to go do, Ron? Meat. No, 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 I just need some. Well, thank you all. I think I'm going to have to actually bow out and get some work done here. Um, appreciate the opportunity. It's been really interesting discussion. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> have a good rest of the day. <laughs> have a good one. Jim wants to Bye, cut Jason. in on Bye. some of this. Does it all fit in? Oh, Tim do. No, <laughs> no Tim Let do. me see if I can get the speakers working do. without the feedback so that Jim can hear too. Yeah. I'm just um All right, I'm let's just see thinking, if you can hear. Um, just for me. No, when, uh, when I heard you guys talking about that, oh. I was listening. I'm sorry, I still can't get into the Google chat thing. Um, hang out. One of the things that was interesting to me is 13 weeks would be interesting, but this kind of class is, is fucked with my head. <laughs> it, like moving between so many personalities is really, I mean, I actually could understand, Julia, to have the students are feeling because I personally am like, wow. <laughs> Like, I come into work, and I'm not really sure who I am. At <laughs> Tim Doom, Tim Room, you know. Uh, Jim. You need a cousin, script. You know, Dr. Oblivion. Jim, was this a good awesome, time to quit smoking, too? I think too? that this was way <laughs> yeah. too immersive in the fact that we were doing it on the fly. But I do think that there's something to it. Timmy said it perfectly. Like, maybe this is a good model for thinking about interaction in a totally online course, because what we're really thinking at Mary Washington is how do we make a kind of liberal arts course that has interaction, has that sense of feel, and use all these tools to kind of get people like connected and engaged, and this kind of meets all of our requirements for what we think we do well with teaching and online, and we didn't want to go to the online kind of pot boiler model. And so DS-106 was a perfect way for us to be like, fuck that, let's do it, and let's build it around a narrative. And DS-106, the spring course, it's almost like, you know, you forget about how amazing that was with the radio and that whole other platform. And then rather than trying to reproduce the magic of DS-106 of spring, which we never could, because that was like Brian was saying, it was like a different narrative every day of just people. We said, why don't we just bring it somewhere else? And I think going into the fictional zone has been interesting, but it's been taxing on um, my personal life. My wife, I mean, had to live with a man she didn't even really want to be with. Like, you know, like the hair. I didn't look very, I, I don't look very good. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not a very attractive man right now. It's had like a real, it's really affected my fucking life. Like, I'm living this thing too much where the next week I'm kind of, I don't really want to be a part of it. Like, I'm kind of like, oh my God, it's done. Let it be done. Okay. Like, I don't want to be you all then, like, these Russia characters on anymore. I just want to like go home. The wig? Like, why did it's you? It's the skull cap, right? I mean, I can't hear you yet. Yeah, hold on one second. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to do that with Okay. Because he's uh, dedicated. But it's been yeah, freaking amazing to actually like work with 
with with with uh, Martha and Timmy and and Andy and have everyone be on board, and then you know all the people, Lou McGill, uh, Sim Cathy, you Stella Meme. I mean, just the way you guys have been playing along the story. Maybe the coolest thing for me this semester has been. And five weeks is not enough, but the cool thing is seeing like you, Stella Meme, and Sim Cathy, and uh, who are the other ben. people who teamed up? Ben oh, yeah, and, ben uh, and, and Cheryl. Um, with, whatchamacallit? With Cheryl, Shannon Cheryl and, teamed and up with the students. Yeah. That was amazing. That was really neat. Amazing I'm going to write about that it. because. To the, me, that was like the coolest thing yeah. about this semester. <clears throat> the online collaboration between the credit and non credit, I've never tried that before. Actually, I, I'm, I help faculty members all the time. Uh, do online collaboration, but as a student, I have never had a, an experience with it, right? It so amazing. that was my first experience as a student, trying to collaborate with with people, you know, in Virginia, two people in Virginia, one person out in Vancouver, and we had to time yeah. zones to deal with. We had to, and it had we had to have it done over the weekend. And if it, we had just been not for credit, we. So Kathy and I probably would have just taken our time, but we had those two girls <laughs> who had to have their assignment done for yeah. Monday, and I was like, oh my god, I'm committed. I, like, we're committed to this group. So it was a totally different uh, experience. It was amazing. And the fact also that you were able to kind of, you know, bring into the conversation about Anansi and all that stuff the reflection on the class. Well, I mean, one of the things that happened in this class, for the students who wanted to do it, there's always going to be students who are just like, man, I didn't expect this. Like, I didn't sign up for this shit. Like, I know there are students who are like that. You know what? More Puff than one. cookies. I, I don't know what to tell you. This is your life. <laughs> Deal with it. But the other thing is, for those students who did, they were, like, deeply reflecting upon their place in the Internet yeah. and the networks and what it means to tell stories and the way you brought in that cultural, the African cultural stories of Anansi with that group and reflected upon what teaching is and learning, particularly with Abby, who is one of the people who like, I did not sign up for this. That's exactly um, what she said. I well, you heard her it. say, she goes, I, I better get an A. <laughs> yeah, that's all she wants. And she wrote me an email from the beginning, like, how do I get an A in this class? It's like, listen, Abby, if I knew, I would tell you. You know, this is not that class. <laughs> Yeah, that was a really interesting experience, and it was it was interesting to have that conversation. I wonder how many, how many times they have those conversations about what it means to be in charge of your own learning, you know? Yeah. So with the whole the heads, I mean, it it was really neat the way that worked out as a collaborative metaphor because they that was Abby's contribution was the Anansi tale. And it was good. Yeah. That was really cool, actually. Was, yeah, I like what that. What was neat was that. Um, the music, the, the story that, that Kathy wanted to tell, this is her story, but the music that she wanted to tell is actually tribal music from Africa. So that's, and then yeah. they're like, oh, that reminds me of Nancy Tales, and that's the tales we would tell. And we're like, all right, well, let's make, let's have some morals then. What are, what, what morals can we get, get from this experience? So that was, well, and that was really cool came organically. So that was a really neat um, online collaborative experience for me anyway. I've never had anything like it, ever. So. What was cool too is that um, Ben and, uh, Cheryl's group with Alan and Shanate was also very contemplative. It was an hour long kind of, you know, sit around the campfire, talk about what is art. And it was like this kind of mind walk thing. I was like, what the hell is going on here? Yeah. Like, this is the discussion you want in a classroom. And it's like, I'm nowhere in that. Like maybe as the character Dr. Oblivion or something else, but, and maybe that's maybe my role as a sideshow, freaky sideshow. No. But that's where I was like, wow, that has nothing to do with anything that we kind of planned. Like, I want you to be able to kind of contemplate this stuff. They're already doing it. You know, and it was to me, it was awesome that it was captured and framed back as something authentic. And I was talking to who? I was talking to Alan. And I was asking Alan, maybe that wouldn't have happened if I was trying to play the teacher and being in there and be like, well, art is, or let me kind of take you to this degree. And, you know, and Ben Rimes was doing a fine job in his gentle way of letting people know. But he was doing a great job of basically, you know, working that. And I let people do it. I don't know. I'm really confused. I'll tell you, I'm tortured by the Summer of Oblivion. I'm tortured by it. Really? The, the whole experiment. I don't know why. Well, but why did been... you try and take, did you have a story worked out? That's what I want to know. No. What happened was this. Did you storyboard day three, this? <laughs> no, day three, I did the third Summer of Oblivion, and Lee Ellis, Leelzebub, and Shadow Tate were here. 
And I said, you know what? This is fucking bullshit. It's not working. This is boring. I'm trying to make fun of the boring lecture, but I'm doing it. And I'm being part of it. And I said, I'm done with Dr. Oblivion. And then Martha and Lee were like, well, why don't you do something else? Like, why don't you give a backstory to Dr. Oblivion? Why don't you do something else? And then I was like, I don't know what to do. And then I was like, well, why doesn't he go missing? And then that's like, yeah, yeah, let him go missing in the T.A. Jim Groom come in and kind of give you some headspace to deal with it. Because the first three days, when I was just Dr. Oblivion, I was fucking nuts because I looked like him. I was being him. I was talking like him. I was like, it was hard to break character. And my wife and kids were calling me Dr. Oblivion. It was only for an hour. You only had to be him for an hour. You know that, right? What's that? You only had to be him for an hour. But it didn't matter because the hair and like the whole being. (laughs) And I was walking around with a suit jacket It's for life. It's for life. (laughs) It is for life. So Why didn't you wear the wig? It was when the Dr. Oblivion went missing that everything changed. Oh, okay. And that's when the narrative, and I have to agree, the narrative was very B-movie narrative, which makes me proud, because it had no real, it wasn't very, like, significant, nor was it compelling or particularly good, but it was a narrative, and it's a very kind of loose prototype of what people might be able to experiment with online learning, rather than trying to reproduce the lecture in the class. No, I love Maybe the idea. I love like, the idea. I the f- totally think it's brilliant. I'm not sure that you should do it in such a way that it messes your headspace up, though. Well, I think if it's not messing your headspace up, maybe you're not doing it right, right? Because Stella Mean must be messing your headspace up. No, I totally love her. <laughs> well, that's, that's weird. I'm actually in and of th- I'm moving to Columbia. I didn't. <laughs> See? It is messing up your headspace. <laughs> yeah. And there it is. <laughs> She's my shadow. I didn't even know uh, Julia was you. Uh, oh, Julia, really? I didn't know Stella was you. Seriously, I didn't know. Oh. <laughs> Till like now? Till just now? But the, yeah, absolutely. I had no, I just I didn't think she was uh, a real person because the name's well, too kooky and she's, and she's not a real person. But then, well, no. <laughs> uh, and then I didn't know it was you because I, I saw the video with the stocking on your head and I thought, oh, whatever it was in your head, and I thought, oh, yeah, it's just some oddball being. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's you. Awesome. I had no idea. Well, I am an oddball. <laughs> She says more things that are in lo- aligned with Julia than Julia does because of the public profile problem. Right? Uh, yeah. Uh, That's cool. uh, I can't comment on that, no. Well, I don't know if Julia would have done an animated GIF, that blackboard thing. Probably not. Well, that was amazing. Right? right. So I really mm-hmm. felt liberated to just do whatever I felt like doing, like art wise, right? Well, that so. was rocking. One of the things sure. that Scott Lowe just got finished with his. Uh, crazy sock puppet class and he seems liberated he was on ds106 for like four hours today rocking out like i'm back i'm scott Lowe he feels liberated now that he's back he did he was he was having a hard time playing the two parts that was messing with him too yeah to keeping it, it, the identity it's something there's something there i don't know how you do it you must be like <laughs> i don't know <laughs> I don't want to go there. This is not a psychoanalyst show. <laughs> Maybe I'm I'm thoroughly not pleased with Julia Forsythe. That could be it. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'm all too pleased with Jim Groom. Maybe there I'm you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just getting so much hassle on my other account, so hmm. it was nice to just sort of separate the two <laughs> activities. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm sorry I stole Tim's show, but I love what you guys were saying. I just want to jump in here. I'm no. kind of half, half I think we're probably half. done. I probably need to eat some lunch and do some stuff, and we could talk about this for hours, I know, and, and we need to do this more often. Maybe we'll hang out more How about that. <laughs> it's so. cool that I can hang out with you, Timmy, right I here. Yeah. I right at this table. I won't promise that I'll jump in Google Plus too much, but I, I do think it has uh, things that are worthwhile, things that are worth questioning, and... Um, and yeah. no doubt this Hangout feature is Like shirts. Soon. Why? Like shirts. Why? Why, why, why do you need a shirt? Optional. <laughs> yeah. Who needs clothes, Brian? Listen, I wish I was in Brian's position where I could run around the house without a shirt. <laughs> 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 I'm well you. past those years. <laughs> All right, folks. I'm jumping out of here. Thanks, Timmy, for hosting this Hangout. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Timmy. What happens when yeah. you leave? Does, does it mm. die? It does not die because Downs left and a couple of us were still hanging around. So oh, you mean this is the same out. hangout? 
What's that? This is the downs. This is no, 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 no. This oh. is not the exact same hangout. But when he left, uh, we were still in there with like one other person, and oh, we were okay. talking to them for about That's five neat. minutes or so. So it doesn't completely kill it, which is cool. But um, anyway, thanks for joining me, y'all, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day and weekend. Thanks, Timmy. Yeah, you too, man. See ya. Uh, Timmy, just before you go. Yeah. What's up, Timmy? Mm -hmm. Oh, because uh, uh, I missed the start of the um, the the hangout. Uh, this will go up on um, the YouTube later, is that right? It will, yes. It'll be up on DS106.tv. Awesome, so, uh, awesome. I'll check that out and um, that'll be cool. So, yeah, thanks for hosting uh, the Hangout and um, good to see everyone. And um, Ro enjoy the rest really of your day and your weekend. You're Thank on. you. Rowan's really disappointed that Brian was already closed by the time he got into the room. <laughs> yeah, next time. <laughs> so let's hope it doesn't get the video pulled from YouTube. <laughs> so. yeah. All right, yeah, thanks, guys. Thank you. Yeah.